Hey guys, Matt here. Are you having trouble streaming, experiencing lag, pixelation, getting drop frames, and you're not really sure as to why? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through everything you need to know in order to fix your laggy stream and avoid drop frames. When breaking down the core issues surrounding stream lag and drop frames, we have to look at two main things. One being your internet connection, and two, your computer resources. Now, there can be a ton of things that go wrong with your PC, your internet connection, etc. when you're trying to get your stream up and running, or even midstream, and it's not fun. You have enough to worry about when it comes to entertaining your viewers, having good alerts, transitions, responding to chat, making sure the audio is good. The list goes on. There's just so much to do as a broadcaster. And getting your stream to run smooth is one of those things that's very tough to narrow down at first. It's not easy. I think it took me months to kind of work things out. I had to switch internet providers to get a decent speed. There's a lot to it, but I think with exposure and practice, you know, tweaking things, you'll eventually get the hang of it. Although the tips and tricks in this video will solve most, if not all the direct issues that affect your stream quality, when it comes to tech, there are a lot of unknowns and it's just important to be aware of that. But enough of my rambling. Let's get to the fixes. Basically, the first thing we need to do is check whether or not our internet is the problem. Most of the time, this is a really quick and easy fix. All we need to do is run a speed test by going to speedtest.net, link in the video description, and we're able to see just how fast of a connection we're actually getting. When it comes to streaming, we're mainly concerned with upload speed, as that represents the amount of data we can send out to the internet, aka the amount of data Twitch, Restream, YouTube, etc. can receive at one given time. And for those who don't know, download is similar, just in the other direction. It represents the amount of data we can receive from the internet at one given time. Higher download speeds representing, well, faster downloads, better online play, less lag, and so on. When streaming at 1080p 30 frames per second, we're looking to have at least 9 or 10 megabits per second upload. And for 720p, again 30 FPS, anywhere from at least 4 to 5 megabits per second upload. Now, each platform has its own recommendations when it comes to bitrate, but these are the speeds that I found work best when your connection is less than ideal or at a minimum. Another quick way to tell if it's your internet connection and not your PC is to open up your stream in a web browser and compare it to your Streamlabs preview. If your stream preview in Streamlabs looks fine, but your stream via Twitch or YouTube is pixelated, laggy, and so on, it's your internet. One other thing we can do to combat an unstable stream is turn on dynamic bitrate. Dynamic bitrate slowly adjusts the bitrate up or down depending on the quality of your network connection. If Streamlabs detects a network issue, your bitrate will decrease in order to compensate, and when such issues are resolved, it will increase back up to its original value. This prevents your stream from dropping frames and getting choppy. Think of Netflix and other streaming services. When your internet quality drops, so does the resolution of your content, but you're still able to consume that content with minimal interruption. Sure, the viewing experience is affected, but it's way better than trying to watch a choppy video or staring at a loading symbol. You can enable dynamic bitrate in Streamlabs by going into Settings, Advanced, Network, and checking Dynamically Change Bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. But since you're here, it's likely that your internet isn't the issue, which means your stream quality is probably breaking down due to a problem with your PC. Whether it's limited hardware resources or misallocation and overload of those resources. When it comes to streaming, there are two main components to consider, your GPU and your CPU. Both can be used to process your stream, but depending on the power of each, one will be better than the other. This is where things start to get specific for your particular use case. Your stream settings will change depending on the strengths and weaknesses of your build. No, I'm not talking about physique, but your actual PC hardware. Now, there are subtle visual differences between the processing done by your GPU and your CPU. One excelling in some areas and vice versa for the other, but 9 times out of 10, the GPU is the better option for encoding, and I'll tell you why in a minute. But now that we know hardware is the problem, let's see what settings we can change in order to get things to run smooth. The first thing we can do when it comes to hardware is drop our resolution and frames. The higher the resolution, not only the better our internet speed needs to be, but the harder our PC has to work in order to process the video before it's sent out to the internet. To put things in a numbers perspective, if we stream at 1080p 60fps, then our PC needs to push out just over 2 million pixels every frame. 
That's 2 million 60 times a second, which is a lot of data, relatively speaking. Now these days, that might not seem like such a big deal, but if you're having trouble, you can probably see how modifying these settings just a little bit will make a huge difference. Dropping the frames and resolution, not diving too deep into the details on the amount of pixels per second required to be processed and sent out, we can see that dropping from 60 FPS to 30 FPS and or lowering the resolution from 1080p to 720p will reduce the load on a machine by a factor of two, four, or even more, depending on how much you lower your video quality. And it's important to note that half the people watching your stream will be on mobile, so the loss in quality isn't that big of a deal. You might have noticed that when watching content on your phone versus your desktop, YouTube has an auto resolution feature that defaults to 480p and 1080p respectively. This further illustrates the point that high resolution video won't make or break your stream. And honestly, when it comes to streaming, high video quality isn't the highest priority. Smooth video and good sound are more important. Now to adjust our stream quality, all we need to do is go into Streamlab settings, click the video tab, and adjust the output resolution along with the common FPS value. Next up is bitrate, representing the amount of data your computer can send out to the internet during a single second interval. Bitrate and video quality work hand in hand when it comes to streaming. In order to have a smooth stream, you need to calibrate your bitrate based on your output resolution and frame rate. Stream.twitch.tv, link in the video description, has a good starting point for bitrate settings when it comes to your resolution, frame rate, and encoder selection. Taking 1080p 60fps NVIDIA NVENC as an example, we can see that with that resolution and frame rate, it suggested that our bitrate be 6,000 kilobits per second. This means that our upload speed should have six megabits per second dedicated solely to our stream. Our recommendation earlier of nine or 10 megabits per second upload as a minimum, allowing for some headroom. Keeping resolution in alignment with bitrate is important to make sure no weird movements or pixelations occur, such as scattered pixels, glitching, and most importantly, movement pixelation. As was briefly mentioned, next in our settings is the encoder. An encoder takes uncompressed video from your GPU and compresses it into a smaller format, which saves space, but also results in a loss of quality. Basically, there are two different main encoder options. A software encoder, X264, which utilizes your CPU, and a hardware encoder, NVENC, which takes advantage of your GPU. Remember when I mentioned way back in the video that I'd tell you later on why it's better to use your GPU instead of your CPU? Well, here goes. When using X264, your CPU has to run extra software on top of your game and stream to perform the encoding, putting more strain on your system. If you use NVENC, the encoding takes place at the hardware level and is taken care of by your GPU. And you might think that you're putting the same strain on your PC, it's just going from your CPU to your GPU, but that isn't entirely true. NVENC, which stands for NVIDIA Encoder, is a separate module on your GPU that's sole purpose is to, well, encode. It compresses the video processed by your GPU to a reasonable quality and size while not taxing the rest of your system. That said, let's look at the settings we can set for both X264 and NVENC so we can cover all our bases. For X264, we need to set the encoder accordingly and adjust the CPU usage preset to faster or slower depending on the quality we want. A faster setting means less time spent processing each frame, putting less strain on the CPU, resulting in lower video quality. While a slower setting means more time spent processing each frame, putting more strain on the CPU, resulting in higher video quality. From my experience, very fast is the best X264 preset when it comes to lightening the load on your CPU and maximizing stream quality. Anything slower when it comes to CPU encoding is barely noticeable in terms of an increase in quality. So I think more is gained from giving your CPU a little room to breathe than squeezing it for every last pixel or bit of quality you can. For NVENC, we should set the encoder to NVENC new, and that's it. We can just leave the preset option to its default. In my instance, it's quality high and we're good to go. Another thing to consider in terms of computer resources is the amount of effort it takes to run Streamlabs. We often forget how resource intensive it is running filters, audio plugins, and multiple sources simultaneously. We can have color correction, green screen keying, 
limiters, equalizers, compressors, overlays, transitions, alerts, you name it. They're all bogging down our system and they start to add up. When this happens, we need to keep track of what's most important. And if you're getting some stream lag, consider disabling or removing some of these items to see if it makes a difference in getting your stream to run smooth. Also, make sure you check the close file when inactive and unload image when not showing on any audio, video, and image sources. This makes sure your system doesn't keep any inactive sources in memory eating up your RAM and CPU. You can also enable performance mode by right-clicking near your Streamlabs preview. This will get rid of your stream preview, but if you can do without, it will definitely help to unload some of the demand on your system. When it comes to making sure your stream is a priority in terms of the software running on your computer, one simple tweak can make all the difference, and that is running Streamlabs OBS as administrator. Now you might be wondering what that does and how it actually works, so I'll tell you. Basically, if you have a lot of programs running simultaneously, such as the case when you're streaming, then your computer will prioritize Streamlabs over any other software. An example being when your system is strained, it might lower the frame rate in a game you're playing, shifting resources over to Streamlabs, thus prioritizing it over other software. If you want to have Streamlabs always set to run as administrator, simply go to the Start menu, search Streamlabs, right-click on the app, and go Open File Location, Right click, select properties, go to the shortcut tab, and check off run as administrator. Exit out with OK and apply, and you're all set. One last tip I recommend to help you get set up fast when it comes to stream settings is to use the auto optimize feature. It's a great place to start and usually only requires a few minor changes to get your stream running smooth. Also, here are my official stream setting recommendations for new streamers experiencing lag and dropped frames. Regardless if you're using your CPU, X264, or your GPU, NVENC NEW, set your resolution to 720p, 30 frames per second, and if you're using your CPU, set the encoder preset to very fast. And that's it. If you guys still have issues, I encourage you to open up your task manager while Streamlabs is running so you can monitor your system load and get an idea of where and what might be causing issues for you. That way, you can keep track of any performance changes made while you make adjustments letting you know what needs fixing. I hope you guys were able to learn something new and fix any lag or drop frames you were getting on stream. I know I learned a lot when it came to doing the research for this video, and I'm completely spent when it comes to this topic, as I'm sure you are too. But if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comment section below. And if you got some value from the video, please be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. <music>